We're back, Sirius XM Blitz, Bruce Murray, Bruce Gradkowski, special edition as we finish up the NFL radio training camp tour, and we spend time with a Vikings legend, Scott Studwell, who left the game of football after, what, 40-something? Well, we'll find out from him because he's with us now. Scott, it's great to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank uh, you. How many Thank years? How many years was it? 42 years. 42 yeah. years. Wow. Pretty good run. Yeah, that is a good uh, run. So, so what, what went into the decision of after 42 years, now is the time? Um, you know, it, 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 it was something that had kind of been brewing for a while. Um, you know, just I, I stepped down from the, being the college director probably 12 or 13 years ago, uh, maybe even longer. Uh, and kind of just uh, the, the pace was so maddening that, that I just needed a break. Um, and then it, it just kind of, as, as, as I fell into this new role and it, it kind of diminished somewhat um, as I progressed through the rest of my career, um, there was just kind of a, I don't know if it was a defining moment, but, you know, we lost six Vikings um, uh, in the last year and a half. And that, that had a very profound effect on me, and it was yeah. just um, – uh, I just felt like it was time. I mean, man, the, the, what you brought to the game, though, 230 tackles in a season is insane to me. And the way you shook my hand today, I, I'm intimidated. I think you could no. still maybe play. No, no. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm no. seeing you and Bruce Murray in these beautiful baby blue shirts. Right. Um, I'm giving you a hard time, but I'm kind of intimidated. But <laughs> – so not by you, not by me, by the way, by Scott. Exactly, yeah. uh, not not you at all with with your nicely combed hair. But Scott, no, talk about the game though. How you when you played to what you see now, how much it's changed. And these guys, I mean, training camp. You're at training camp today, and and what you see these players going through. Man, the way your training camp was. Well, it, obviously the game has has evolved um, tremendously. It's it's it, it's a better game today than it used to be it's a bigger faster game uh the athletes are are so much better uh, probably than when i first started um but you know i mean there's there's players that i played with back in the 70s that could transcend into any generation and play today you know so yeah. so i mean it's it's um my first year in 1977, we went to Mankato for – we were there for seven weeks. Seven you know, weeks. We, we had, Is that insane? Yeah. And six had, preseason it, games, it, right? Yeah, six, six preseason and games. And they're not getting paid like the guys are now. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Not eating the same either. <laughs> six preseason games. And we were always the last team to come to camp because Bud just – you know, that's the way Bud operated. And – but, you know, the minute we, we got to Mankato, the next day we were in pads twice a day – every day until we left. Yeah. Wow. So th there's so many things. I, you know, when you walked in, I said, um, you know, I grew up a Giants fan, but they were so bad when I was a kid that my second favorite team was the Vikings, and I <laughs> love those Bud Grant teams. But, you know, this is when you were still playing outside. Metrodome didn't open until the 80s, right? Right. right. So you're playing at Metropolitan Stadium, which is now a mall. Um, and what I remember was Bud Grant always wanted to use that to his advantage, and you had to provide the other team whatever you had. So there were no heaters. There was all that stuff. What, what was it like playing outside at Metropolitan Stadium in the month of December? You know, I, I, as a young player, um, because, you know, I was, we were there for, I'm trying to think, when did we move into the Metrodome, Tracy? 81, 82, maybe? Early, early 80s. So we were, I mean, we were outside for four or five years anyway. And, I mean, as a young player, I, I loved it. You know, I mean, it was... I didn't wear sweatshirts. I didn't wear <laughs> sleeves. I didn't wear, you know, because you're 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 so jacked up for these games that, um, you know, it it was we had some, yeah. you know, the, twenty below. The adrenaline's yeah. going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, your your first year was seventy seven. So you came in the year after right. the team went to the Super Bowl, right? Yep. Yeah. So yep. W was that the best team you played on? And I know that you didn't go. I uh, you you have to help me out with this. I don't think seventy seven. You went to the championship game. We did. You did go yeah, to the championship game in 77? Yeah. Uh, and you lost to Dallas in Dallas. Oh, you lost to Dallas, yeah, right. They, yeah. they beat you pretty soundly, if I'm yeah, not mistaken, they did. right? Okay. Yeah, they did. Um, was that the best team you played on? Uh, no. No, not at all. What was I, the best yeah. team you played on? The best team that I played on would have been the 87 team. 
uh, when we went to the championship game in, in Washington and lost to the Redskins. Right. So, and that one was closer, right? They beat yeah, you by a touchdown, it was maybe? A touchdown. Yeah. So wow. that was the best. I mean, we had some legit guys. And, and I mean, in 77, I played with. Hall of Famers, and I played with Tarkenton and Tinglehoff and Eller and Page and Marshall and Seaman and Blair. I mean, the list goes on. Paul Krause and, but you know, we had the same type of talent on our foot on that football team with with um, Gary Zimmerman and Randall McDaniel and Keith Millard and Chris Dolman. And I mean, it was just Joey Browner yeah. and I mean, just. That's the, Hall of Fame guys as well. Yeah. So. And, and, and that's amazing. And then you take your, you know, great career into, into scouting. And, it, you know, I'm just so interested in that because when you played the game, it's definitely different than it is now. But how did you, um, you know, make that adjustment and also watch players and know how to adjust your own mindset of, you know what, this isn't kind of when I played, they're bigger, stronger, faster. And so when you go to scout some of these guys, how did you go about it? you know, trying to make the difference of back then till now? Well, you, you know, I think that uh, the, the scouting job and the scouting role kind of almost evolved just the way that my career did. Um, you know, it just you had to make changes and adjustments every year. Right. And, you know, back when, when, I, when I was, for the most part, when I was playing, I mean, everybody ran the football. I mean, and, and that was... That was the the bread and butter for 90% of the teams in the league. I mean, they ran the football, and they threw it when they had to. And now it's almost the exact opposite, right. you know. And it's – it's and the, the position that has really transcended and really made it hard to evaluate is the quarterback position because they're rarely under the center. They're always in the gun, you know, and, and it's all this quick rhythm stuff and – you know, everything's called in from the sidelines, so you don't know what, what they're asking them to do or telling them to do. So, I mean, you can see the physical skills. Right. But uh, it's hard to tell how much they actually know because right. coaches control so much in college with those yeah. big, you know, those neon signs yeah. they hold yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, we, we've talked about three positions, and I'd love to get your thoughts on all. You just talked about the quarterback position, but evaluating even an offensive lineman, a left tackle specifically – we're in college. They're holding their blocks now for two seconds, and the ball is out. And they're not being asked to push up field anymore right. because everything's in the throwing game. That's got to be tough. You know, I, I think to Greg Robinson, we evaluate athletes, but that doesn't always translate to an NFL team. So how difficult was it in the latter stages to, to evaluate those guys? You know, offensive linemen, quite honestly, are, are, are a little easier to grade than maybe a lot of other positions just because, you know, they're not in and out of the game. You know, it's, whereas you might be grading a, a Nick corner or a Nick safety or a Will backer that's not a not a three down player, or you know these guys play every snap unless they get hurt or they're you know either way ahead or way behind. So you know that other than the fact that you know a lot of them these days are always playing out of a two point stance, other than the center, um, you know they rarely have their their hand in the ground. So. You know, it, it's hard to evaluate how they are in the run game as far as, you know, can this guy move people? But if they're athletic and they've got the length and they've got the intelligence and they've got the, the want to, you know, they're going to they're gonna play in our league. Is there anyone that comes to mind that maybe you scouted and you brought him up and people weren't really high on him, but then he ended up turning out to be a great player in the NFL? Uh you know, rather than singling out one individual, I, I, there were players that I think um, that I championed uh, that we took at, at various stages of the draft um, that, you know, those are the guys that, that you feel really good about. Yeah. Um, just because you just had that feeling that these guys are going to be successful because they had that that want to and that makeup. Uh, both physically and mentally, mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, the, the the guys that you remember the most are the guys that busted. Yeah, yeah. right. Because <laughs> you know, 
those guys scar you now. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to get over those guys. Isn't it what athletes always say? You remember the losses more than you remember oh, the yeah, wins because right. they stick with you longer. Oh. we got to get you out of here in a minute. I want to go back to the old Vikings for a second because there's always something I wanted to ask. Uh, my favorite player as a kid was Alan Page. And I always had this tremendous respect for him because it, it seemed like after football, he didn't want to make his life about football. I think there were times when he said, you know, becoming a jurist was, you know, football was a means to an end. What was he like in the locker room? You know, I only really played with Allen for, for one season because he, he got traded to the Bears. The, I think it was the 78 season. Right. So, um, you know, and he had, you know, at, at, the, at the time, he had gotten into running. Uh, so he had dropped like 50, 60 pounds. He was he played at like wow. 220 <laughs> wow. as a defensive tackle in the league, and you know, and he was yeah, wow. and he was a little long in the tooth, you know, but not but he still had productive years left in him. Um, so I would never really got to know Allen as well as I got to know some of the other guys. But very intelligent player, very intelligent person. Um, you know, had a great demeanor about him. Um, he could turn it on on Sundays, you know, and, and you knew when he was around and when he spoke, he listened. So, you know, and that's the way he's conducted himself and carried himself. And he's he's been a great asset not only to this organization, but to the community here and, you know. Yeah, one of the many, many yeah. legends that this organization has had, including yourself, Scott Studwell. Absolutely. Scott, uh, love the fact that you could stop by and spend some time with us. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, Bruce yeah, and Bruce. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. you bet, guys. <laughs>